Good morning, Hugh. Good morning, Joe. How we doing? Good. Good morning, Philly. Good morning, Philadelphia. Yeah, I'm. I'm okay. You're right. I'm just. I'm. I. I am. I am cautiously optimistic. Okay. You know that's why I'm a little. You know, a little cautious. And you know, I'm feeling pretty good. You know, I went to get my my QR. I went to QC Kinetics yesterday. How the knees knee. feeling today? Pretty good, man. Good. Yeah, I'm. I might. You know. Might give him some, let me try to call Howie, give him a little bit of pass, or see how I feel. You after know, this, I think they need this, it. Next, <laughs> this next treatment. So I just wanted to give him a real quick shout out because I, man, I tell you, it's like the biggest thing for me is the whole needle thing. I don't like the needles, but after that, I feel pretty good. good. Like knees feel like I got bend in my knee and everything, but. You know, back to these Eagles, man. Yeah, they need uh, they need to look good because it hasn't yeah, looked good for a while. Yeah, they, they have not looked good for a while, man. But like I said yesterday, I feel like there needs to be a conversation that has to be had in that locker room. Everybody needs to air their dirty laundry, if you will. And we need to figure this out before we play Monday night. All right, Hugh. Or that, Monday, Monday on Christmas. 425, something yeah. like that. Hugh, they may need that. And we'll, we'll get into all of that. So Seth Jordan will join the show at 11. Elliot Shore Park Slater. But we start, and you heard it there, and it gave me the same shiver that I felt yesterday when Kyle played it. The Wentz watch. Wentz watch. Yeah, again, I have, I have shivers down my it's spine. The, it's, the, it's the wind blowing it is, for me. It is. And, and here's the reason I say it, and here's the reason Kyle plays it. Because there are elements of watching Jalen Hurts this season that remind me, and you, you guys know I'm not saying this lightly because I – was one of the originators of, of like banging the table, like, hey, the quarter, the, there's something wrong with the quarterback, and this was five years ago. Watching Jalen Hurts this year, I have, I have some – my antenna's up. I will put it this way. My antenna's up to put Jalen Hurts and put this city on Wentz Watch 2.0. And, and here's what I mean. I'm not comparing their personalities. I'm not comparing their ability to be coached because I believe Jalen Hurts has has the right stuff and and Carson Wentz had the wrong stuff. I'm just talking about the player, watching the player. If you look at Carson Wentz 2017, what he was able to do, Jalen Hurts last year, kind of an out-of-nowhere, dynamic, MVP-caliber season. Mm-hmm. And then you look at the next year for Jalen, which we're in now, and the next couple years for Carson Wentz, where he went down, his completion percentage, his passer rating, his QBR – it all it all fell pretty pretty hard from where he was at his best. Jalen mm-hmm. Jalen's experiencing the same thing this year. We're talking about a quarterback then that it was a back issue, it was a knee issue with Jalen Hurts. This year it's been a knee issue, and we're watching a quarterback that seemingly doesn't know what he's seeing when he views the field, or he's unsure, or he's not confident. Whatever the words we want to use, right? Like he's holding the ball too long. Guys are open. Maybe he's not throwing it to them. He's throwing it to coverage. Like it's just everything's choppier. Everything's harder. For this offense this year with with Jalen Hurts, just like it started to be with Carson Wentz back in 2018. Two one five five nine two nine four nine four. And so I went back, Hugh, and I just want to I want to read you this. I went back and I was digging some stuff up and just just looking back, okay. And and I found this Going back in archives. I went back in the archives. Yes, I feel like uh, you know the old reels they used to have the yeah. library when we were kids. But I just was on my you phone. Know, I used to yeah. be a part of that. So, yeah, you know you bring this no, nostalgic. I know. I, I was too, but now I just <laughs> pull up my phone. Here's what really, like, you know those, those chills I talked about? Uh-huh. It, 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 I got the chills reading this because I'm going to read you some, uh, like just a few lines from an article. Okay, I'm not going to tell you the date. I'm not going to tell you the year. And you're not going to know the date or the year Okay, or the quarterback. H- here's what I found in this article I read this morning from a, an Eagles game uh, from not too long ago. Quote, it's true the offense was a problem and the coach is the one designing and calling and, and designing the place. Some of the play calling was suspect. No question about that. The first question of the press conference started with the premise that the quarterback had missed open receivers more this year than in years past, and it was especially true in this game versus Seattle. That could have been written on Monday night. It was written when Carson Wentz played against the Seahawks in 2019. Hugh, I want to believe he's not the next Carson Wentz, and right now I don't. I don't believe he's going to fall apart the way Wentz did. I don't. I don't but I don't, I'm on Wentz watch. I'm on Wentz watch. I don't believe that to be the case. Now, I, I know that, you know, there has been evidence that he's been missing a lot of open receivers. Talked to a lot of OGs that are in the city that, that are, are very, very familiar with this situation, played a lot of football, and they see things probably the same way that you see them. But I say to you this, if that's the case and what we know about Jalen – and the fact that he has been coached hard his whole life, who do you look to to tell him and coach him harder to, to be the guy 
that needs to see that and do better as a quarterback. Your best friend, the guy that you've known your whole life. And on top of that, I still look at this game the other night, and it was a controllable game, no question about it. For whatever reason, he decided to be, he decided that that game was his Jordan flu game, and he was going to go for all the marbles in that situation. But that's on the coach to tell him, no, you're not supposed to do that. The, my friends, my, my good friends, are the ones that even when, you know, we're, we're cool, they will tell me when I'm wrong. And they'll tell me in a way where I might not like the message. I might not like the delivery of the message, but the message is received. That's what friends are for. That's what good friends do for you. And if that's the case for Jalen, he needs to be coached harder. And if he's not being coached harder, who is that on? That's on his coach. It's on the coaches. Because one of the things that we were told adamantly last year and what we know about Jalen or what we think we know about Jalen is that he is not adverse to hard coaching. I think it's why he became as good as he became. Yes, because because all we did was give him praise and accolades for going through the adverse situations that he's had his – seems like his entire life playing that position and how he's come out on the other side of that. So now all of a sudden if you tell me he's become a snowflake and you can't coach him, I don't believe that. That's on you. That That's on the coaching. And on top of that, you still ran this man 13 times for 80 yards. He was still <clears> – <throat> excuse me. He was still your leading rusher on a team that has multiple running backs and one running back you're not even using. So to me, I, I hear what you're saying – and there's probably some evidence of that. But some of these plays that we're running are still pedestrian. And I, I know that some receivers open, but they're still pedestrian. I plays. agree with that. I do. 215-592-9494. That is true. He, I, that is true. That, that, but this rem, that's why it reminds me of the Wentz thing. Because we taught, the coaching got worse. They lost John. They lost Di Filippo. They lost Frank Reich. They didn't replace them well enough, and and the fundamentals for for Carson got worse. Whether that was Carson's fault or the the team's fault for not putting the right coach around him, the fundamentals got worse. Hertz's fundamentals are getting worse, and then the, the play calling stuff. Like that's what that's what we kept hearing. It's combination. It's not Wentz. It's the play calling, and we're do, we're we're doing it again. But but here's here's where I would push back, and and I and you were here, so I wasn't here for this, but. I would say, was it uh, one of those things with Carson Wentz? Was it the whole game, or or was it like spurts in the game where he just looked bad? It, well, it, it it deteriorated. At the beginning, it was spurts, and then as the years went on, it was just the whole the whole thing. See, and you're talking about years that went on. Jalen Hurts, like, and and if I'm wrong, please correct me because, like I said, you were here for the Wentz thing, but Jalen Hurts started out his year on fire. He was in the well. I guess you could say the same thing about about Carson Wentz. But no, you can't because the MVP year that he was in, he actually got hurt. Yeah. But let last year's Wentz, I mean, let last year's Hurts and 2017 Wentz, very similar except the injury. They were, okay. they were great. Okay. They were great. And then it, it got worse. So so this is where I would push back on. Like Jalen Hurts started out his year pretty strong. And as we went through this, the issues that he had at the beginning of the year started to become issues because he started losing. This is like a three-week skid. And I will push back on this and say that even in that game, the other night, Monday night game, he started off pretty good, yeah, even though, even though, there was some times where I felt like he was running a little bit too much, and he looked a little, he looked a little tired, he looked a little worn as the game progressed. But there were still some opportunities there. We controlled that game for at least three and a half quarters. We were in control of that game, so that's why I'm like, oh, I don't think so. I think that there was a, there was something, there was a disconnect somewhere, and I think Jalen wanted to play hero ball. And well, that well, Wentz did that kind of stuff, like not taking the check. I remember a game against Carolina in 2018 here, where the Eagles, I think, lost like 21-17, mm-hmm. 20, very similar to the game on Monday against Seattle. And there was a play at the end where Wentz went for the end zone, and it was just complete. And he had the check down to I forget who the back was. It was like the, that team's version of game. Well, Smallwood, maybe, maybe it might have been Wendell Small, whatever. And he had him wide open, and he didn't see him. Two one five five nine two ninety four ninety four. Look, I don't say this with any joy, and I say it with great trepidation. I officially have Wentz watch when I'm talking about Jalen Hurts. I, I, it's in the back of my mind. And maybe it's because we went through it, and I went through it. Traumatized. You traumatized. I, I am traumatized. You're traumatized. And, I, and I'm hoping that it's not happening again. And we're in. Wentz uh, watch. Kyle's going to kill me with that today. <laughs> my antenna's up. 215 592 9494. The coaching got worse, the decision making got worse. Injuries started to d- diminish the athleticism of the player, 
and then it went downhill. 215-592-9494. Are you officially putting Jalen Hurts on Wench Watch?